Intel KB Lake processors have just been released and that has nothing to do with the contents of this video. So what we're doing today is we're at a new location. I'm dabbling about with different filming locations. Right here we call this the scratched up desk. It's a desk, it's destroyed, and it's scratched up. And what are we going to do on the scratched up desk? Let's install Ubuntu, I believe version 16.10 on this computer. This is a Compaq Prezaro uh, SR5710Y but we'll just call it the trash heap. So we're gonna install Linux on this trash heap here. This is another trash picked computer. I would have done a full-on video about this and I think cleaning this thing might have been interesting to like the two people that find somebody blowing out a computer with an air compressor interesting because this thing was filthy. It was filled with every kind of nicotine you could imagine. So that's the computer and uh, what I'm going to do is basically, I currently have Windows 7 installed on this computer. As you can see right here, when I pan over to the monitor that's actually on, this only has one display out, so I can't use my normal semi-good monitor and awful monitor combination setup. So what we're going to do is we're going to see if we have any performance improvements and, or any usability improvements installing Ubuntu on here. And we're also going to attempt to use Linux as a daily driver operating system on this computer. Now that we have a close-up of our monitor, we're just going to look, look at this thing a bit. And let's just look at the quick properties. 3 gigabytes of RAM, AMD Athlon 450E at 2.3 gigahertz. This is a socket AM3 uh, motherboard, not an AM3+. Plus. So depending on how this goes, I may or may not do upgrades to this computer in the future. But let's see, we just got a basic... 250 gigabyte hard drive and NVIDIA GeForce G1550, I mean G150 SE NForce 430. That's a mouthful. That's our graphics and everything else is pretty standard. So what we're going to do to make this fair, since Ubuntu, we're going to dual boot and Ubuntu is going to require a bootloader, I'm just going to do it here from the advanced boot options screen. Press enter on start windows normally and count from the time I press enter to the time we, see, we hear the startup sound. So three, two, one. and stop that's not too bad that's a uh, this is a relatively fresh copy of windows 7 we have on here and as you can see that was a 22.77 second startup time let's stick the flash drive in and forewarning it's been a long time since i've really used linux on a real non-virtual computer uh, the last version of ubuntu that i used was 12.10 and that's all the info seems to be on the flash drive fine and Ubuntu 12.10 was on my uh, HP Pavilion ZE 2000 computer and it worked a lot better than Windows but that's the last time I really used Linux as a daily driver so it it's gonna take some catching up to and some refamiliarizing myself but hopefully the uh, interface hasn't changed too much and we'll do escape to get to the boot menu there we go this computer is capable of booting off a flash drive as are most modern computers. And we're just going to go to our USB flash drive and boot off of it. Let's see what happens. Re remove disks or other media, press any key to what? So I've reburned the image onto this flash drive which looks like Speedy Gonzales and we're just gonna decapitate him and insert him into the computer hopefully the right way and power it on and see if we get a different outcome escape is the boot menu I'm pressing escape I'm gonna hope that the boot menu opened yep there we go and we're just gonna go down to USB disk and hope for the best Hey! It works. So the moral of the story is ISO to USB is a terrible program. Never download it. But if you want to make a bootable USB drive by copying your ISO files to a USB flash drive, uh, use Rufus. It's a far superior program. <laughs> Alright, and this screen looks identical to the last time I used it, so 
Maybe it hasn't changed too much. We're just going to skip trying it. We're just going to go straight to installing it. Hope for the best. English, that's my language. All right, let's get it all done in one step. Do we have a connection? We sure do. All right, let's download updates, install third-party software. Why not continue? Let's just get it all done in one swoop. The last time I ran this was off of a CD version 12.10. Interesting story, actually. I was a... Uh, messing around with my computer trying to get do one of those memes where to make a windows computer look like a mac and it was perfect i had it looking good except the startup screen because it still said starting windows and the windows logo so i wanted to change it to one of those cool little things where you know it had the apple logo starting it i did that and i ended up messing up the computer and instead of trying to recover windows 7 i just got a live cd of ubuntu on a different computer this is actually, I believe, my grandfather's computer, and I burned it to the disc. I was like 12. That was before I even made that Compact Prezaro 2240 video. And I burned it on the disc, uh, copied all my important files onto a flash drive, because most of them fit. It was only like a 60 gigabyte hard drive. It was a really bad computer. And installed Ubuntu on it. And I enjoyed it. And that was version 12.10. So hopefully, this is version 16.10, I do believe. Let me double check here. Um, at my ISO file, but I do believe it's version 16.10. Yes, this is 16.10, and it's the 64-bit version, so hopefully it runs fine on this computer. Figured I'd download the 64-bit version, if I liked it, I can install it on other computers. This is taking a while. So I wasn't paying attention. Here we are at the next screen. This computer currently has multiple operating systems on it. What would you like to do? I'm going to install Ubuntu alongside them. I've never dual booted Ubuntu before, so. Allocate drive space by. Oh, alright. Well, this sure seems simple. Alright. So, this is my main drive, I assume. And. So, how do we want to do this? I think we'll give this drive. the win I think we'll give Windows 7 100 gigs. And Ubuntu 137 gigs. You know what? I'm so trusting in Ubuntu. I'm going to give it only 70 gigs. Give Windows 70 gigs, Ubuntu 167. Let's do that. All right. It's now or never. Got my fingers crossed. I do I only the only thing I have on this drive backed up is one audio recording that was important and that's actually recording of an emergency alert system from a radio repeater which should be if it's not already uploaded, it should be uploaded pretty soon. I'm what you're looking at right here is an HP Pavilion ZE2000 laptop. This laptop right here was my first ever computer, and it is what got me started in personal computers and my interest in the hobby. So I'll just open this thing up. This is what it looks like on the inside. This thing was ancient. I received this uh, for Christmas of 2012, I believe. Christmas of 2012, if my memory serves me right. So I was 11 years old when I received this laptop. And here's what the bottom looks like. Took off the doors. Don't know where those doors went. They're gone. But yeah, I have a lot of memories about this thing. It was this computer, this laptop right here, is what I edited that Compact Prezaro 2240 video on and uploaded it with. I used Windows Movie Maker, the kind that came with Windows XP, and yeah. We have this message, write the changes to the disks hasn't even written anything to the disk. Okay, continue. If it took that long just sitting there, this is going to be a long installation. Oh, there we go. Geography, where are you? Well, it doesn't matter, but I like to do this on my HP, and I want to do it now. I'm going to click the closest city to me, Detroit. There we go. Continue. Not that it matters at all. It's just the, just the time zone. English U.S., Keyboard layout's just fine. Your name. What should my name be? 
All right, this meme is stolen from somebody else, but you know what? It's good enough. All right, now we're copying files. So. Yay! All right, uh, we have reached completion. Installation complete. Your installation is complete. You need to restart your computer. Oh, oh, installation is complete. You need to restart the computer in order to use the new installation. They don't say your because they're not friendly. Of Ubuntu, 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 Linux. All right, here we are at the boot screen. Let's do Ubuntu. This won't be our boot test because it's still installing. Woo! All right, it's working. And the login screen does look different than what I remember. Different background, at least. What did I set my password? I think I know. All right. Be a shame if I couldn't even remember my own password. This is version 16.10. That confirms it. And yeah, that was a nice looking login screen. I remember what I liked about this as opposed to other Linux versions that it just looked nicer and more polished. I think that was the big appeal of it to me. Kind of reminds me of Mac OS X. What? Uh, is it broken? We're not getting any hard drive activity. This keyboard doesn't have indicator lights, so I can't do the caps lock test. I think we've locked up our system. It broke. I gotta press the power button. Uh, it broke. Let's try that again. I don't know what. I think it just cracked. Ah, there we go. Whew, all right. This I remember. This is familiar to me. The background looks a bit different, but then again, the Windows 7 and Windows 10 backgrounds are different. So I haven't used Ubuntu since like 2012, so it's been a while. But here we go. This is the sidebar, which is has your volumes down here, your icons. Alrighty. So we seem to have a successful install. Please join us in part two. And I will attempt to set this up, install applications, and actually use it. Until then, I'll see you in about part two.